So a while back, we did a video on my top 10 favorite Unity tips. Well, we see the 10 and we raise you by 90. That's right, we're kicking off the new year with 100 cool Unity tips and tricks that hopefully is going to make your life a whole lot easier. About 100 bits easier to be exact. Also, a huge thanks to all of you who've been checking out Line of Code. To those of you who don't know, we just launched a game dev clothing store and we're just really excited about it. So if you haven't checked it out yet, head on over to lineofcode.io. There's of course a link for that in the description. All right, 100 Unity tips, here we go. So first tip, you can change back to the old selection outline by going under gizmos and turning on selection wire. Next, you can use the pixel perfect camera component to get super crisp pixel art. Make sure to first install the package in the package manager. You can sort sprites based on their Y value by going to the graphics menu in the project settings and setting the transparency sort mode to custom axis and the Y value to one. If you want to destroy a game object, but would like to wait a few seconds, you can insert a delay as a second parameter. If you right click on a shader and create a material, it will create a material based on that shader and name it accordingly. You can use runtime initialization on load method to execute code in your scripts without having to create an empty game object with a mono behavior. Copy components while in play mode and paste them back when not playing to save changes. To randomly get a variable that is either true or false, simply use this short statement. Consider using structs instead of classes when storing just a few variables because they can live in the stack which eliminates garbage collection. Write the beginning of a statement in your script and double press tab to generate the rest. Start a coroutine within another coroutine using this code snippet. The animation window can be used to animate pretty much everything. The cool thing is that this includes parameters in your own custom scripts. You can use Ctrl A to select everything in the animation window and then F to frame it all. You can use C to toggle curve view and K for keyframe. In the animator, you can reverse an animation by setting the speed to minus one. When comparing a distance, don't use vector3.distance. Instead, subtract the two points and use square magnitude. Then square the number you want to compare with. This saves a square root call, which is really slow. Use TextMesh Pro instead of default text objects to get way more control and much crisper text at all sizes. Mark private variables with serialized fields to make them appear in the inspector while still being private. If you want to hide a public variable without making it private, mark it with hide in inspector. Use the formally serialized as attribute to rename a field without losing its serialized value. You can add folder shortcuts into your Unity project to easily be able to open folders that you often use. Focus on an object by selecting it and pressing F. Press F twice if you want to follow the object around. Match the game camera to the scene view by selecting the camera in the hierarchy and pressing Ctrl Shift F. When comparing two tags, try to avoid the double equals. It's more performant to use the compare tag method. You can use empty game objects as dividers in your hierarchy to help organize your objects. If you want to find all objects with a particular component, just search for it in the hierarchy. In project search, T colon scene shows only scenes, T colon texture shows only textures and so on. Pretty cool for quickly finding objects of a certain type. Use alt plus arrow up and down to quickly move lines without having to copy and paste. Quickly navigate to the documentation for a component by hitting the book in the upper right corner. Do you need to know when something changed and how? Then go to the documentation versions to get links to documentation for all previous Unity versions. Hold down Alt while expanding an object in the hierarchy to expand all child objects as well. The same applies to collapsing. Unity is completely customizable. You can move around windows until you're happy, then save your settings as a new layout. By going to edit, Preferences, color, you can adjust editor colors, including the background color of the scene view. You can also make the editor change color when playing the game by adjusting the play mode tint. This is great so you don't forget that the game is running. You can choose what effects to show in the scene view by going under the landscape dropdown at the top. Want to be able to quickly call a certain function? Simply use the menu item attribute to assign a function to a new menu item at the top of the Unity editor. And use the context menu attribute to do the same thing, but adding the function to the context menu instead. Split up your objects into layers to easily be able to toggle them on and off in the scene. You can also lock layers to avoid accidentally moving objects that you don't want to select. When creating layers or tags, you can use a slash to create submenus to make it easier to organize your project. Use project settings, player, other settings, and then scripting define symbols to add global C sharp defines to your project. These can be used to omit or include code when compiling. You can use the color picker to get colors outside of Unity itself. And copy paste works on colors. Use shift plus space to maximize a window. Use the system.serializable attribute to be able to see and edit classes and structs in the inspector. 
Change which layers collide with which by going under physics and changing the collision matrix. Also, this is how different colliders interact when all on the same layer. If I had to get something tattooed on my body, this might be it. You can do math calculations inside of number fields in the inspector. No need to bring out a calculator. Unity also allows you to lock the inspector. This is especially useful if you open a second inspector because it allows you to copy values between two objects really quickly. Was that the 50 mark? I think it was. That calls for a sip of water. Well, let's continue. The drop down menu at the top of the inspector has a debug mode option. When enabled, this will display all variables, including private ones. When using debug.log, you can add a game object as a second attribute. This will highlight the game object in the scene when clicking on the log. You can use simple styling in debug logs to spite up your console messages. Sometimes when you have a variable that changes over time, it would be great if you could just see it on a graph. Luckily, we can use animation curves to achieve this fairly easily, using this code snippet. You can quickly add a new script by pressing add component, typing the name of the script and hitting enter twice. Unity can read save files from programs such as Photoshop, Blender and Maya. No need to export to another format first. To keep individual Photoshop layers when importing into Unity, simply save as a PSB file instead. This does require you to install the PSD importer from the package manager. Assign gizmos to objects using the inspector. Choose your own custom gizmos by selecting other. Enable and disable gizmos categorically from the scene view. You can do this for the game view as well at the top. The code hell plus o plus space plus world creates a lot of strings and memory garbage. Use string builder for concatenating multiple strings more effectively. Create your own editor objects using scriptable objects. This is great for organizing game data like items or achievements. In the preferences window, you can choose what happens when the script changes while playing. Pretty cool since a lot of the time weird stuff happens when you just continue playing. You can easily extend the Unity editor to add your own custom windows with tools and overviews. We have a video on this I recommend you watch if you've never tried it out. It's a lot of fun. And if you don't want to create a whole new window, you can simply create a custom inspector. This way you can change how you display components in the editor to add buttons, display more information, and so on. We of course have a video on that as well. You can use the Q, W, E, R, and T keys to quickly swap between tools. And you can actually use the Rec Transform tool to scale 3D objects. It's perfect for scaling from bounds instead of around the pivot. Holding control while moving an object snaps the position to full world units. For more snapping options, go to Edit, Snap Settings. Hold V to grab and drag objects by their vertices, as well as snap them to other vertices. Reduce C Sharp compile time by creating your own managed assemblies. Right click in the project, select assembly definition and move it to the folder you want. Now all scripts inside that folder will be compiled to this assembly. Yield return new wait for seconds 1 will never stop if time.timescale is set to 0. To change this, use wait for seconds real time instead. You can store references to components that you're going to be using a lot in private variables to save on performance. This is called caching. Never use camera.main. It literally does this behind the scenes. Oh the horror. If you're using a lot of non-changing strings in your code, you can use static read-only string to avoid allocating a bit of memory each time. There are quite a few attributes that make your inspector life a lot easier. Here are the ones that I use the most. Range allows you to create a slider that goes between the min and max value. Space adds an empty space. Header creates a tiny bit of text. Tooltip changes the tooltip when hovering over a variable. Now, when visiting the asset store, you can do so both using a web browser or from within the editor. You can drag and drop one scene onto another to merge them. Easily duplicate an object by hitting Ctrl D. You can also use the same command to duplicate array items. You can use presets to save configurations for your components. Simply use the sliders in the corner to choose between presets or create a new one. To loop over all direct children of an object, use this code snippet. Use transform.setSiblingIndex to change the order of objects in the hierarchy by a script. Save your current selection by going Edit, Selection and choosing a number. You can then load back the selection from the same menu or using the shortcut. Use regions to create collapsible sections in your code. Watch out, this is a slippery slope that leads to very long scripts. You can pause the editor at a specific moment during runtime by setting editor application.isPause to true. The frame skip button next to pause can be used to proceed one frame at a time. Use the game stats window for a quick overview over your game statistics. For a more in-depth look at performance, use the profiler window. And you can use this code snippet to measure the execution of a function in the profiler. 
Get a closer look at what you're inspecting by right clicking on the upper part of the preview to undock it and it will then act as any other window. Need a quick break from your game's audio? Simply hit the mute button in the game view. Monobehavior.invoke repeating does not stop repeating on deactivated game objects. Go to Window Frame Debugger to see a breakdown of how each frame is rendered. You can also visualize physics shapes using the Physics Debugger. It's great for spotting errors in colliders. And finally, for tip number 100, don't make an MMORPG. Seriously, don't. Whew. There you go, that's 100 Unity tips. Now there are, of course, a lot more. Actually, I don't think there is. I think we covered all of them. But I'm sure you guys can think of more, so please do share them in the comments. And of course, don't forget to check out Line of Code using the link in the description. On that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Let the outtakes begin! <laughs> So, <clears throat> yep, <laughs> that just happened. Well, we see the 10 and we raise you by 90. <laughs> thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November, and a special thanks to Make a Game, Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Alexander Blair, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Sheriff Abdullah, Chris, Faisal Marify, Thanks So Long, Leo Lissette, Clinton Fenskewer, Stray SD, Ronin, Bruins Cat, Naoki Iwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, Cool Swedish Key, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Corey Jackson, Pacom Bernier, Robert Bund, Erasmus, Anthony Patton, Obrisi, James P, Timo Folderbach, John Shannon, Alex Jarotsky, Travis Dillon, Rudy and Travis. And Carsten Surland. 